Good day, everyone. Back again for another exciting week, huh? Just can't get enough. Just can't get enough of this. Well, let's talk about another topic today. Once again, the furry fandom's been a little quiet. It's been a little quiet. Little dramas here and there, like AU, like some art, popular artists who go against the AUP and AUP, the authorized use policies and stuff like that, and crossing the line. But, you know, that's just everyday stuff, you know. So, let's talk about something unfurry fandom related. I'm going to do another Sapien Sunday run. So, this week, kind of keeping on topic with what we talked about last week about fixing outdated bathroom architecture, let's talk about fixing some other thing that's outdated, huh? Well, this one's a little more GLBT, even, even more GLBT than the last one, because this one I'm going to talk about something that many people in the GLBT community know about very important item that is used within um, discussing um, homosexual versus heterosexual and all this stuff and interpretations and stuff like that. It's called what is called the Kinsley Scale. Now, for those who are not in the know of what the Kinsley Scale is, it is a number range from 0 to 6. And depending on how far over you are on one side or how far over you are on the other, it basically says Basically, how gay or how straight are you? Let's just let's just make it that. Let's just simplify it to those basic terms. Uh, basically, you know, there's there's a whole breakdown, and I don't have it memorized. All right, I'm not that good. All right, but basically, I believe zero is exclusively heterosexual and have no interest in the same gender, and then one is predominantly heterosexual, but may have a lingering interest in a few of the same gender here and there. Two, kind of a little bit more, but still predominantly hetero. Three is like perfectly bi, like perfectly in the middle. You know, you, you could prefer either gender. And then, et cetera, et cetera, four, you know, become, you know, mostly homosexual, but some, you might have some interest in some people with, you know, the opposite gender, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, till all the way to six, which is, I'm all the way, I'm all the way gay. Okay, that's the un-PC way of saying it. I'm all the way gay, and the other guy's all not so gay on the zero side. So basically the scale goes from that way to that way. Basically someone who's a six would have absolutely ever, ever, ever have any interest in anyone of the opposite gender. So basically, now, this Kinsey scale was actually made a long time ago. You remember when I said the bathroom design was made in the 20s? Well, and, and that back then they really, really didn't understand, you know, how, you, know, you know, the GLBT community or anything like that. Well, interestingly, worlds are parallel sometimes because it was that same era in which this kind of thing, discovery, was being made in, in, the, in the scientific community. Now, obviously, this was a controversial thing, a topic at the time. But it, Kinsley's, you know, thing has really brought, you know, really brought the GLBT thing into the mainstream conversation. Very much so to the inspiration of, one can even, you know, hypothesize that the rainbow flag, the, 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 the thing that's known, this, this, the straight band of um, seven colors, because basically zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six, are seven different things on the Kinsley scale. If you look at what the, um, how many colors are in the rainbow? Well, Roy, that's three. The, I'm having trouble with my camera today. Roy, G, Biv. So you have red, orange, yellow, green, etc. So you have seven colors basically. So you can kind of see that maybe, you know, Kinsley Scale had some sort of inspiration of the, over the homosexual flag. And not only was it the rainbow, which was like, oh man, this is cool, but they had the seven colors on it, which makes it like the seven things on the Kinsey Scale. Isn't that kind of cool? Did you think of that? I just thought of it just now, <laughs> okay? I'm just making stuff up. But it's a good thought to have, right? It's, it seems kind of symbolic that you have the seven colors and the seven things. However, the interesting thing is the reason I'm saying that the Kinsey scale is outdated right now is that I feel that there's a missing element to sexuality. As sexual, 
our understanding of sexuality has become even more complex than just the GLBT, um, you know, the seven Kinsey scale line. We've started to interpret more. We've started to throw in more alphabets into the GLBT community. GLBT, Q, T, W, T, F. You know what I mean? It's like I and like a lot of letters, all right? A lot of different letters, a lot of different um, sexualities and interpretations on those sexualities. So clearly the Kinsey scale kind of can't cover everything in just those pure seven things. So interestingly, when I was in college, I learned of something, at, you know, I saw politics before I went to college is kind of the same way as kind of this line where someone might be, you know, very, very conservative or very, very, very liberal. And there was this kind of mushy middle in the middle. So it was kind of like that whole Kinsey scale. It's like, I'm predominantly Democrat and I'm predominantly Republican and everyone else is in the mushy middle. And then when I read something about, I, I saw something for the first time when someone was discovering, talking to me, I found my first libertarian and they were like, what the heck is a libertarian? And then they showed me this scale. And not just the scale, but a grid. And on this grid, you had basically, it was basically what do you believe the government should have a role in? And in social endeavors was one line and financial endeavors was another line. And basically the line went from major government interference to zero government interference. And same thing on both financial and social. So using those two things together, there was no longer just a left and a right. There was social people who believe in smaller government on social issues and on financial issues or bigger government on financial issues and social issues and each of those four corners that generated on this kind of gave its own little thing we understand things as the left and right and we understand things and but we don't really understand the other two sides so when you start to flip things around you start to see different things like you see the left the right the up and the down and what happens is that the up is typically anarchist, like, like and that is extreme. So at the extreme left, like you have extreme names for each of these things, right? At the very, very, very edges of the map, you have kind of extreme names. So you'll have, and I'll, and I'll provide a link for this, and I, and I probably did already, that you can follow along in another window if you haven't already. This is very impromptu, okay? So try to keep up. Um, and I'm very tired, it's been a very long week. Um, so basically at the far, 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 far left, you have what's called socialist. At the very, 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 very far right, you have what's called fascist. At the very, 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 very far top, you have what's called an anarchist. And at the very, 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 very far bottom, you have a totalitarian or authoritarian. Like you have those four different ideas of what government should be at their most extreme. And then you have everyone else in the middle. You have someone who is on the left, but not quite that far on the left, and doesn't really believe in socialism. You have someone on the right, but not so far right that they'd be a fascist. They do still do believe in having some freedoms of some sort, etc., etc. So when I first saw this, I thought I, it, something clicked to me because, and it clicked because of the Kinsey scale, of the research done on the Kinsey scale, and the major reason was because. Kinsey's, Kinsey's research had an X. What's X? Well, here's a puzzle for you. Why was the ace pilot so good at his job? Because he wasn't chasing any tail. Get it? Get it? He's ace. He's an ace pilot. Don't get it? Okay. Ace is a shorthand term. It's a slang term for asexual. All right? Asexuality means that you don't have any interest in sexual endeavors whatsoever. You don't like the coitus, all right? Um, think of, for the most part, um, if you want to go to the most exaggerated point, um, the guy from that Big Bang show or whatever, the, the guy who's like, I don't want the coitus. I just, well, I just want to be me and I don't want to have the coitus. Um, basically, having no interest or drive or sexual or drive to have sexual intercourse, basically. You find that that is an asexual, and asexuality was very much understood in the Kinsey scale, but it wasn't on the scale. 
So they couldn't put it from 0 to 7, so they just made it an X. They made it a letter. But here's the thing. If you cannot define something along a line, then that means that you're not thinking in enough dimensions. That's essentially what it is. If something cannot be measured with the one dimension that you have created, then that means you must create a new dimension to compensate. And that, understanding the Nolan chart, I thought, well then, then if this, that the one chart is how much interest do I have in one gender or the other, then the other chart, the other line has to be how much am I interest in, interested in sexual endeavors in general. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the drive scale. And just to keep things consistent, we're going to use the same seven values. You're going to have a number from zero to six. Zero being the absolute bottom, you have no interest in sexuality at all. You don't have no interest in expressing sexual desire. By the way, this is, I guess this is going to be a upper level thing. I try to keep my thing general audience, but obviously talking about this kind of topic means that you have to kind of have the sex 101 talk, which means that it's probably going to be teen for teen, all right? And I'll put a, put a thing on it. We're talking about Kinsey scale here, okay? So, all right? So basically the zero would be you're, you're not interested in intercourse at all. I have no interest in any of that business. None at all. So the interesting thing, though, is that now that we have this on a grid, just because you're asexual doesn't mean you don't have a preference for one gender or neither. It doesn't mean you don't have a preference for either gender. It doesn't mean that necessarily. You can, you, you can be asexual without being aromantic, which is a whole other can of worms, which I don't have on my grid. I'll, I'll throw up a little thing, by the way, um, while we're talking about this grid. Um, it's going to be a scrap in my FA or something like that, or I probably should have to put it up on my Google Plus page just so you can actually click the link and go to it and then kind of drag it over to its own window and do it to its own window over here and do whatever you need to do with it. But so basically, it's a very, very, very sketchy, all right? So, it, but it basically gives you the whole grid format. So basically, you can be asexual without. You know, having to worry about it's like, well, I'm asexual, but I still romantically like those of the same gender or the opposite gender. Those things are not tied to one another. The ace line is basically the zero on the drive scale, and it goes all the way to the tippity top. And the tippity top is omnisexuality, which means that if something's driving you to want to pursue a relationship. Getting in bed is probably that drive, all right? Let's just be blunt, all right? There, it, it's probably what drives the entire relationship. If, if, the, if, if the physical relationship ain't good, you ain't dealing with any of that. You're just going to get right out of there. The physical part is the most important part to the people on a drive scale of six. But once again, just because that kind of, you know, actually, I, I can't, I got to take that back. That's more pan. I think I think the word I'm looking for is more pan. It's it's um, the six is kind of pan at the pan line, pansexuality. So basically, you can be pansexual but also have an interest in just one. You know, have a preference for one gender over the other. But you know, sexuality does drive most of your relationship decisions. Um, but then again, that's kind of a that's once again. It's kind of a flake, it's kind of a wishy-washy kind of thing to say because the interesting thing is that most people who consider themselves a pure asexual or a pure omni pan will consider themselves a three on the Kinsey scale because you know they if they don't want anything to deal with intercourse they're not going to want to deal with any other you know they, they they see their their lack of drive on both genders equal. And same thing with their pan. They will say, oh, I'm pan because I like both genders equally. And, I, and, I, and it can't be separated. But in this theory that I'm presenting, and it's a theory, by the way, there's no scientific thing. He's just my interpretation based upon my observation of human behavior. Um, and that's just you know what I'm saying is that I don't think that they're tied together. I don't necessarily think that they're tied together, even though many people see them as tied together. Um, whether or not that's the case, we'll see. 
Um, and you know, if you are a scientific person who is studying humans, humans intercourse and sexuality, by all means, study. You know, look at this hypothesis and try to prove it right in a lab. Because, quite frankly, I don't have the time. I'm busy doing rambling videos on YouTube, which is far, far, far more less important. <laughs> Anyways, all right. So, so then you got the thing in the middle, like because then you got the exclusively heterosexual. Like for the Kinsley scale, you have the exclusively hetero, the exclusively homosexual, and then you have the bi in the center. So likewise, with the drive scale on the one end, you got the ace. On the other side, you got the pan, and in the center, you got probably the demi. I would say it's demi is kind of weird because it's different. Like it's it has to do with connection with the person rather than the gender. So it kind of it, it's kind of weird. So so I mean. Demi's in the middle somewhere, you know what I mean? It's not at the one extreme and it's not the other. Sapio as well, sapiosexual. Now let me define some of these terms um, really quick because I probably just went, man, you're throwing all these words at me. Have the Google over there and start looking them up because I might throw words out there that are like, what the heck is this? Um, pansexual usually means sexual interest in everything. Um, Demi usually is, as the book definition, is usually defined as Basically, you have to have a personal connection with that person before you consider intercourse. Intercourse is important to you, but it's not, you know, it's not the be-all, end-all. It's not, you know, it's not the first thing you're going to look for in somebody. You want to basically have a connection with that person before you get into any of, the, of that stuff. So it's on the table, but it's not going to be the first thing. It's going to be kind of in the middle. So that's kind of why I use that as kind of why it would be in the middle of the drive. Same with sapio, which sapio has to do with intelligence. Uh, sapio sexually means that you're sexually attracted to an intelligent person, ladies. Um, but, but interestingly enough, um, so, so basically you can kind of start to see like where certain um, things would lie upon the grid where certain tendencies would be on this grid of a, 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 if somebody had a high drive or a low drive versus being a number on the Kinsey scale, you know, exclusively hetero to exclusively homo. You can start to get a more grid and understanding of kind of where things fall in a more fluid manner and understanding that it's a little more complicated than just seven slices. In fact, I would say that even, like, I'm just introducing this concept, and even my concept has a lot of holes in it already, and I can, like Kinsley did with a, with, a, with the aces, he could see that, you know, his thing was limiting and it didn't include them. So mine includes the aces, but there's a lot of other things that it may not necessarily include. Um, I'm trying to think of one that it doesn't necessarily include, like, um... Like it really doesn't include Demi, um, but it it doesn't. Oh, it absolutely doesn't um, include um, a romantic or whatever the opposite of that is. Um, so maybe that's another scale, uh, and it has to do with something completely different. And maybe Demi has more to do with that than my drive scale does. So maybe that's a third dimension that I'm not aware of yet. But I don't know enough about, because I've only heard the, the term aromantic thrown around, but I don't know anything else. Like, I don't have any other things to compare that to. I don't know any other definitions beyond that, which would kind of make it its own scale. Um, but, so long or the short, I think that was kind of a really, really quick and dirty video. And unfortunately, you probably a lot of you are a little bit lost right now, and this, this topic probably goes way over some of your heads. This is obviously not a 101 video, which you know you can find anywhere and by googling and doing all that. This 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 video series is not 101. What can I say? I talk about really advanced things that a lot of people don't talk about because these are weird ideas that just pop up in my head so for some reason and. I just present them to somebody who might be interested in these weird, quirky ideas. And that's what this show is all about, folks. So let's say goodbye to another week. 
Okay, say goodbye, tail. Tail, come on, work with me. Say goodbye, tail. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Oh, my poor tail. I've sat on it for so long. It's like, ouch, man. Anyways, I'm getting the hop out of here. Have a good week, everyone. Wow, that was 20 minutes? Sheesh. You guys survived. And so did I. Have a good night.